So when you realised the attack was happening on Saturday morning, you heard the sirens going off, but I think you told me earlier, you just thought it was just, again, a normal one. Every two or three months, lots and lots of Iron Dome sirens and they go off. And happen. Yeah. When did you realise that wasn't the case? I think it was 6.30 when I left my home to see the skies, just to see the explosions in the skies. Um, and I have a pool, uh, and it's not sink down the ground, it's upwards. So I, I actually took the stairs up, and I looked at the Gaza side, and then I heard um, the shottings from M16 um, automatically uh, so uh, sound, and it was very weird. First of all, because the IDF doesn't normally uh, shoot automatically mm -hmm. uh, at 6 a.m. on a Saturday on a holiday. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing was that uh, my friend kept on calling me. And it was like 6.40 in the morning. I, I didn't respond because I thought, like, what could she ask for at 6.40? Mm -hmm. She can wait until 10 or something like that. So I went back to sleep uh, for a few minutes. And then she kept on calling me. Once I picked up and I was like, what do you want? She said, there is a huge invasion of uh, terrorists into Israel. And even when she said that, I couldn't believe until they sent me the um, video showing the Hamas terrors, terrorists inside of Zderot, which is a closed by city. And that was the time when I thought, okay, it doesn't really matter if there are missiles outside and something could damage our car, something could damage us on the way out. We have to get out because we have a problem with our lock. Uh, kibbutz is a place where it's very safe to live. It's a closed community. It's a farming community, isn't yeah, it? Really? Um, not really. I actually own a renewable energy company, so it's not sure, but just the, farmers. The history is the farm. farm yes, area. yes, uh, yes. It's it has um, different history than other places yeah. in Israel, but it's everybody knows everybody. Nobody will steal from your house, so you can leave everything open. Your cars, your home, yeah. everything was open and that was the time when I started to freak out because I knew indoors won't be safe, outdoors isn't safe, I'd rather run away. Yeah. Um, me, I took my boyfriend and we just left. I took a few of my stuff. I thought I could go back until uh, the afternoon because I thought there are like five, six, sure. ten terrorists. The army will deal with that and we can go back home. Uh, so I just grabbed a few of my stuff and we ran away. On our way out, I actually noticed some uh, cars uh, we, uh, that had their windows open and guns pointing out. And I took photos of that, actually, because it looked so weird, like a GTA uh, game or something like that. And I filmed it all. And then we heard a lot of noise coming from, again, M16 or just something um, weird. Like, firing uh, automatically uh, towards us, towards, towards the air. I didn't really knew where it was going. I just knew that we have to go fast and f far away. When we reached a uh, closed um, uh, space, like a nice space to a stay in, place, yes, yeah. a safe place, I tried to call uh, at these parents. And uh, they didn't respond and they're back for in the hours. In the yes, and our friends as well. I tried to call everyone, but the cellular satellite went off. Yeah. And um, and this is where we started to feel hopeless. And we saw the news. We saw people calling to the news that terror terrorists in their home, and the police isn't there, the yeah. IDF isn't there, and that no one uh, is there to help them. Uh, that's when we decided to go back to the kibbutz. When we uh, moved towards the kibbutz, uh, there was, of course, an IDF stop um, at the beginning of the intersection going right to the kibbutz. So the IDF soldiers told us, it's on your responsibility if you want to go in because we don't know the amount of terrorists. We don't know the amount, how, how they dressed because some of them dressed normally. Uh, not all of them looked like terrorists, but th they did carry guns. Mm -hmm. They have RPGs, uh, very armed uh, people, and you're willing to take that risk. I can't stop you if you're uh, that hysterical about going inside. And so they, they wouldn't protect you if you went in and they couldn't No, help because you. they don't know. They didn't know who was a terrorist and yes. who was a, a local Israeli just doing their normal work and getting on with life and trying to flee from the terrorists. Yes. So we went inside 
And um, I mean, we took the car seats as back as we can because we thought that if they didn't saw maybe me or, you know, because uh, he was driving. So I thought maybe if they didn't saw me, they wouldn't shoot us or something like that, something. We just tried to be as safe as we can under those circumstances. And uh, we went in. When we went in, uh, uh, my friend told me that there are bodies on the floor, but because I was laying over uh, inside of the car, I, I didn't believe him and I didn't want to believe him. I didn't want to, to lift the, um, the seat up. And when we um, reached the gates of the kibbutz, because the electricity went off, those gates are electricity uh, yeah. powered. So the electricity went off and there was a person with a dog holding the gate. And then again, I didn't know who was who, but and he didn't recognize us, so we didn't open immediately the gates, and it was a very uh, scary moment. Um, but then he saw us open the gates. We took his parents. We took sev some of our stuff, like clothes. We figured out that uh, uh, there's going to be a big war and uh, that the IDF won't uh, be silent about that. So we thought that this area will become a war zone. We grabbed some more stuff of our home. Did you see the thing in the street when you drove through? Did you see bodies? And uh, yeah, mostly bodies. Some of them were burned, so we didn't recognize people. Some of them were terrorist bodies. Um, later on, I f found out that uh, I have a few of my friends in the party, in the rave that was uh, arranging uh, at that morning. Some of them were kidnapped. Some of them were raped and um, taken under hostage uh, to the Gaza Strip. It was really horrible. Yeah. And when you left the kibbutz, yeah. when you drove away, did you feel as though you would ever come back to that place? I didn't think about that. I just thought that I need to get away, and I need to get away fast because, again, the terrorists were over there. They were hiding in the reserve. They still are hiding in the reserve um, and trying to penetrate from the ocean. And I didn't think about what was going to happen. Even now, I try not to think about what is happening over there. I try not to think about my home or my belongings. Um, I just try. I think now I took on myself a mi as a mission to spread what is happening, what happens. And um, every minute we get new news uh, about babies uh, that are being kidnapped, about babies that are being killed and the women, and the, it's just frightening that it could be us mm. uh, if we weren't uh, able to leave this fast, mm -hmm. and if we won't, won't be able to come back, uh, grab his parents, it could be them mm. as well. Have you spoken to the families of any of your friends who have been kidnapped in the last three days? I can't. It's just, it's too hard. I hear them on the TV. I see the news on Facebook. I try to keep up with that. But I think that it's almost impossible uh, and you must to, see to their faces about. everywhere. You must see them. Yes, I see their faces everywhere. And also, some of them were announced dead. So again, some of them are currently not with us anymore. We don't even know when will they have a funeral, uh, if they could have a funeral because some of them live in the kibbutzes and it's a closed uh, war zone right now. So we don't really know what was going to happen.